evening. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us this evening for our first annual virtual San Jose Recreation Preschool webinar. We're excited to have you and welcome you to this space of new and exciting opportunities for your early learners. This evening I'm joined by Nancy Duan and Edwardson Sabando, who are part of the San Jose Recreation Preschool team and support it on a citywide basis. Uh, for those of you I have not had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Lauren Hawkins. I also support the San Jose Recreation Preschool team on a citywide level. We will be going over the program goals to provide you a little bit more context of how uh, we're operating and what we hope for you and your children to get out of this program. We'll also be talking about uh, the structure of the program to give you more of an understanding of how the program will be operating moving forward. And um, Edwardson will be talking about some tips and tricks to make your Zoom experience more pleasurable. And then we, as an administrative team, have some tips for you for virtual success. And then at the end of the evening, we'll have a Q&A portion available. So our program goals are quite simple. Uh, we hope that this opportunity uh, allows your children to connect and provide them with both emotional and social support as we learn to navigate the new norm. Um, this environment is meant to be a safe space and a opportunity for children to express themselves in a both uh, inquisitive and curious way. Uh, all of our activities, we hope to be active and engaging for you and your little learner. And this is an opportunity for us to continue to support them um, on their developmental journey. And one of our main program goals for all PRNS programs is to have fun. So this is a new program for us as the department. And um, I want to provide a little bit more information as to how the program will operate. So this particular program is going to be meeting three times a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Each class meeting will be 45 minutes in length. You'll have the opportunity in the coming weeks to pick up your take-home kits. And these take-home kits have been uh, cultivated by each site and each instructor to the specific topics and areas of interest that they plan to go over in those 45 minute sessions. Um, you'll also be provided with a Zoom link and this will be a, the reoccurring link you'll use every class meeting. There'll also be an opportunity for you to uh, connect with your instructors, with the program supervisor to ask any questions and get additional support if needed. Um, some of the materials that we'll be providing you uh, at the conclusion of this webinar will be the auditory script, which will help you to support your child in their print awareness and uh, tips for digital connectivity, devices, and things of that nature. Uh, Nancy, you're up next. Hi everyone, my name is Nancy Doan and I'm with Lauren on the San Jose Recreation Preschool team. And I just wanna take a few minutes to go over seeds. SEED serves as a relationship-based framework within which adults can create a safe, inclusive learning environment with quality interactions. We implemented SEEDs at a few of our piloted San Jose Recreation Preschool site last year and saw great results. So thank you for taking the journey with us as we venture into this new arena of virtual learning. Parents, caregivers, you are your child's first and most important teacher. In addition to the support of your child's virtual teacher, it is with the hope that you can be our extension through the screen with the SEEDS curriculum. SEEDS quality can be easily integrated in your daily activities, so let's dive on in. What does SEEDS stand for? SEEDS stands for sensitivity, encouragement, education, development, and self-image. It is when all these qualities come together that it creates a balance. Research shows that high quality early interactions and positive relationships with the adults closest to them help children develop strong social emotional skills increasing their likelihood of success in school and in life. I'm going to briefly go into each quality and give you some tips on how you can become a SEED parent at home. We are going to start off with sensitivity, but before we jump into the slide, I want you to take a second to think, what does it mean to be a sensitive parent? You already do this as a parent. You tap into your five senses. You use your senses to become aware of your child's actions, abilities, thoughts, and feelings. Sensitivity creates a safe and trusting environment for children. One seed tip is to watch, wait, and listen. When you watch, wait, and listen to what your child says, he or she will get the opportunity to talk about his or her thoughts. 
For example, let's say that your child is assembling their art project. You can use the watch, wait, and listen. So first, actively observe your child, make a comment. Oh, I see that you've glued on the turtle's head on its back. Then ask either a closed-ended or open-ended question. Then you wait and you listen for their response. Being sensitive is also being aware of your child's developmental continuum and responds appropriately to meet the needs of your child. So part of the virtual classroom, you will also receive take-home packets prepared by your teacher. The packet will consist of activities to do at home following your teacher's instructions. We are encouraging all parents and caregivers who are supporting the student during the activity to allow the student to complete their art project themselves. Art craft projects are to be a child's self-expression, 100% unique to them. There is no wrong or right way. So we look forward to seeing all of your child's projects. Our next slide is encouragement. Don't you love getting encouragement? I know I do, whether it be in the form of a high five, a verbal job well done, or a descriptive affirmation. It just feels good to be encouraged. Encouragement inspires confidence, hope, courage, and a will to continue. The child develops a sense that they can do it, that they are lovable, capable, and that the adult respects them and their abilities. You can encourage your child through using positive nonverbal communication, which is a positive action not using or involving words. An example of that is a smile, a wink, a high five, a hug. You can also encourage your child using affirmation, which is a positive statement that describes or mirrors what is observed. It is a powerful strategy that provides children with encouragement helps build their vocabulary and provide it meaning. It also teaches positive behavior. For example, wow, Molly, you tied your shoes all by yourself. Or Ellie, you wrote all the letters in your name. Another way to show encouragement is by giving praises, a phrase or word that expresses an opinion or approval for somebody's action. It is often subjective and based on your feelings. It is in the form of encouragement that many of us are most familiar with. For example, Great job, I like it. Excellent work, Steve. I like how you wrote the letter E in your name, or you did a great job sitting today while your teacher read the book. The next slide is on education. Education. Steve identified a study that shows the difference of how many vocabulary words each child heard a day through their interactions with their caregivers and parents. And it's through that study where they found that the more words a child hears per hour is linked to early school success. Steve has the big five early literacy predictors, which are vocabulary meaning, alphabetic knowledge, book and print concept, phonological memory and awareness, oral language, conversation, and comprehension. Our teachers will be teaching through the screen and to list a few things. They will be teaching letters, rhyming words, and new vocabulary words. They will also conduct repeated read out loud where the student gets more opportunity to grasp new vocabulary words. They will sing songs that you could also sing along at home. For example, cat, hat, these two rhyme, cat, hat, these two rhyme, cat, hat, these two rhyme, they sound the same at the end. Super fun, right? And super simple. Um, so other things you can do at home is you can read together, you can play rhyming games, you can create a writing center, fill it with paper and writing utensil. So whenever your child wants to draw or write, they're able to access it. You can sing songs together. You can ask open-ended questions. And remember to watch, wait, and listen. You can teach them new words through using running commentary. Running commentaries are easy. You just talk. Describe what you, they, someone is doing. It's surprising how kids can pick up a lot of words from just hearing other people talk. Can you think of a few ways that you can incorporate meaningful learning experiences throughout the day? The next one is development. Children develop skills through doing, using a multi-sensory approach. Children that are actively engaged using their eyes, hands, ears, mouth, and nose are more likely to enjoy learning and continuing on the road of language and literacy. Children who are actively engaged in learning are clapping, singing, reading, thinking, writing, listening, questioning, jumping, counting, helping, repeating, and talking, to list a few. An example is, to use the auditory script. You can use that to help your child learn how to write their name. Please reach out to your site supervisor for a copy of the auditory script. Self-image. The adult balances each seed element to create quality interactions that support the child's feelings of being lovable, respected, and capable. The child feels confident, 
they have a can-do attitude, and they feel proud about themselves. These quality interaction can help support the child to be better prepared for TK and kindergarten and create that foundation for learning success. Great, thank you for that, Nancy. Um, many of you are asking, I'm sure, how does SEEDS intertwine with the schedule of the day? What can we expect? So the schedule that you see before you is just a sample of what you could experience in the virtual San Jose Recreation Preschool Program. Each day when children come to school, um, we want to welcome them. You know, many of you are returning families and we are just as excited to see you as you are excited to see us. So we'll have an opportunity at the start of each day to check in and see how everybody is doing. Um, again, students will have the opportunity to check in with their peers, share something cool and exciting that they have found maybe or a new toy that they got. Um, but throughout the course of the program, we really wanna make sure that we're hitting all of the major um, areas of development to support their to support your child to ensure that we're helping them uh, gain the skills that they need as they gear up to transition to kindergarten or TK in their educational adventure. Um, one of the items that Nancy had talked about earlier as part of the foundation of SEEDS is education. Um, one of the concepts that we will be implementing in all of our classrooms is the repeated read aloud um, activity. This activity is really important to that second E in SEEDS. Um, statistically, we know that if you read a book once, a child is 10, takes 10% of the words that they have heard and uses that in their everyday life. But if you're reading it multiple times, say three to five times, they're 80 to 90% more likely to use those words. So we're providing a very uh, vocabulary rich opportunity and engagement for them so that they can build their uh, bucket of words to pull from through conversations with you as parents and caregivers and with their peers. And this is really gonna help them um, feel confident in who they are and their ability to express themselves uh, as they move on in life. So again, this is just a sample of what um, a class meeting could look like. Every uh, instructor and every community center is a little bit different. and We pride ourselves on that and curtailing our program to meet the needs of our children and their families. So next up, we're gonna have Edwardson, um, who's part of our digital equity team. He's gonna give you guys a little bit of tips and tricks uh, regarding the platform Zoom that we'll be utilizing. How are you guys doing? So the platform that we're gonna be utilizing for San Jose Recreation Preschool uh, is Zoom. So Zoom is basically an online audio and web conferencing platform. Um, where you can do calls and um, see somebody on the other side of the screen uh, while you're talking to them. Signing in. Um, there's two ways that you can access Zoom. One is through a desktop and one's through a mobile device. To get started um, with the desktop um, access, to get in, you're going to need to sign into Zoom and register for an account. Um, you can do this by clicking the sign up button on your top right corner of the screen. Uh, then um, the next step, you'll lead into creating an account. So as the parent, you're gonna go ahead and fill in all of the information as a parent, and then you're gonna get a chance um, later on when your kid signs in to the platform to change, and, uh, change the name as you go. Um, Next, you're gonna be downloading the desktop app. So this is uh, the best way to access Zoom. Um, it's more effective and um, used for easy access. You can go ahead and click the, the link for, um, for the meeting and um, it's an easier access. Next, you can, is, there's the mobile sign-in uh, where you can access by downloading um, the Zoom on iOS or Android on your Apple Store or uh, Play Store. Uh, then you would go ahead and register for an account like you would do on the desktop um, and fill in all your information then. Okay, so joining Zoom. So there's two ways that you can join to a Zoom meeting. To a desktop, you can log into your Zoom account once you've made the account. Um, and then um, you can do that by filling in all of um, the meeting details. Um, you can put in your uh, meeting ID and then also the password. Like Lauren said earlier, this uh, meeting ID 
and password is going to be the same for the duration of the program. Um, and also, um, you're able to just go ahead and click the link um, once it's been um, sent over to you or scheduled in your calendar. So here's some basic tips and tricks um, for you parents uh, to use uh, during the platform. Um, so number one is the mute button. So this feature allows you to turn on and turn off the microphone. Number two um, is the video button. This allows you to turn on and turn off the video capabilities. Uh, we do encourage our students to stay on the video and audio to keep our students engaged and interactive with our teachers. Um, number three is, this is the participation list. This actually allows um, our teachers to see um, who is in the Zoom meeting. Um, so like I said a while ago, there's gonna be a chance on your upper right hand side when you click that button to edit um, your name or your child's name into to that uh, feature. And then number four is the chat window. Um, this will pop, in, pop up on your right hand side. Um, basically, this is a way for our teachers to communicate with our parents in the time of uh, the meeting. Number five is basically the share icon button where um, this is gonna be mostly utilized by the teacher to show um, them and share the screen um, to show any videos, any graphics of some sort that they're gonna be learning for the day. And then number six is the end or leave meeting button. Um, this is a button that you can click um, if by any chance you or your child need to step away from the meeting, you can go ahead and uh, click that button. Great, thank you for that, Edwardson. And again, all of this information that we reviewed today uh, will be sent and will be available to any of our enrolled families. Uh, all you need to do is contact your program supervisor if you have more specific questions on how to utilize Zoom. Uh, so some of the key tips that we have found um, for virtual learning is one, to ensure that you have a quiet space that's separate from other members of your household that might be teleworking or doing distance learning themselves. To, this is really important to allow you and your child to actively engage with the class uh, and instructors and get all of the rich content uh, available. Additionally, making sure that the device you have you're familiar with, you know how to utilize it and are already set up in advance um, to ensure ease of access and uh, troubleshoot any issues prior to class starting. And last but not least, a can-do attitude. Your attitude as a parent and caregiver regarding the class is really important. You set the tone for the child and their engagement and their excitement for whatever content the instructor is presenting on any given day. So if you are actively engaged and you have the can-do attitude, so will your child. Again, we want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their evening to join us for our first webinar. And if you have any questions, concerns throughout uh, your virtual San Jose Recreation Preschool experience, we highly encourage you to reach out to your program supervisor at your community center, or you're more than welcome to reach out to the administration team, and we'll do our best to answer any questions or concerns that you might have. This virtual programming uh, is new territory for all of us and we are actively looking for ways to make this experience uh, more engaging and pleasurable for everybody involved. So please feel free to share uh, those comments with us so we can continue to support you and your early learner throughout this experience.